I think the Apollo 8 mission was one of the most important missions uh, of the whole NASA experience. It was the first time that humans left the vicinity of Earth and traveled to another world. Apollo 8 was not originally planned as a moon mission. NASA's plan was to do an Earth orbital mission. But in September 1968, the Soviets sent Zond 5 to pass by the moon. The space race competition to land humans on the moon, the goal set by President Kennedy in 61, seemed to be heating up considerably. And after the successful Earth orbit mission of Apollo 7, the time seemed right for a bolder, a riskier mission, a voyage to the moon. Apollo 8 Commander Frank Borman and Command Module Pilot Jim Lovell had flown more hours than any other astronauts. Indeed, they were ready for Apollo 8. So too was Bill Anders, William Anders, making his very first flight. The mission departed December 21st and returned December 28, 1968. Launched just before the Christmas holidays, the mission balanced the tension of the space race with a transcendent feeling that the accomplishment was truly for all humanity. John was awful generous in saying how important Apollo 8 was, but in reality, every flight was important. NASA's program wasn't haphazard. It didn't just, it didn't just happen. It was planned every step of the way, and it was remarkable uh, that, it, that it worked. I think I honestly believe that God was, uh, was shining on us from the, from the very beginning. When we were told that we were going to go to the moon, we were planning and we are training and we are doing everything, and then it was on the day of the launch, the rocket itself is filled with five and a half million pounds of high explosives. Everyone else is a comfortable three and a half miles away. And I said, these people are really serious. We're going to go to the moon. This is Apollo Saturn launch control. We are still go at this time. T minus 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9. We have ignition sequence start. The engines are on. Four, three, two, one, zero. Nobody had ridden on the Saturn V. We have commit. We have. We have lift off. They didn't no sooner lift this thing off when I realized that we had missed one major part of the simulation. The sideways vibration with those big, huge, 1.5 million pound thrust each engines gimbling around, trying to keep this thing straight. The center of gravity was way down here. We were up here like a ladybug on the end of your automobile antenna. So as it moved down here an inch, this thing moved a foot. And I was convinced that the, the fins were bouncing up the uh, girders of the uh, launch uh, tower. Also, the noise was deafening. There was no way we could communicate. When we cleared the tower, things smoothed out, and I thought, boy, if we miss that in our training, what else have we missed? <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly, the rocket cut off. The primer cord sheared off the first stage. Instantaneously, some retro rockets fired. It felt like I was being catapulted right through the instrument panel. Okay, that went so I threw my hand up. About the time my hand got up here, the second stage cut in. Whack! <laughs> So I looked up and I had my, my face, my helmet on, and here was this gash across my helmet. And I thought, oh gosh, you know, when the big boys see this, you know, it's going to just, you know, justify the rookie position. Well, we made it into orbit, and somewhere along the line, uh, I collected the helmets, and I noticed that the other two guys each had a slash. So my point is, there's no rookies on the first Saturn fly. Everybody's a rookie. We went around once and a half around the Earth, and then over, it was over Hawaii, wasn't it? We got the go for TLI, translunar injection. Apollo 8, Houston. Go ahead, Houston. Apollo 8, you are go for TLI. Over. Roger, understand. We're go for TLI. Mike Collins said, Apollo 8, you're go for TLI. We lit the S-4B, started out, picked up, what, 25,000 miles an hour, and uh, started toward the moon. Apollo 8, Houston, your trajectory and guidance are go, over. Thank you, Michael. Yeah, you're looking real good, Mike. Just as we were cutting in front of the moon, like, like high schoolers trying to outrace the train uh, in their jalopy and be beating it by a yard, we went into the shadow of the moon, and it was dark. And I remember looking back and uh, 
seeing all these stars and suddenly there was this big black hole. And I gotta tell you, the hair went up on the back of my neck because that was the moon. But when First we finally came into the sunshine, actually, we came out, I think we were best expressed as uh, you know, three school kids looking through a candy store window. Our noses were pressed to the, the glass, and we were all looking at those ancient old craters on the far side of the moon, which, of course, as you all know, we don't see from the Earth. I think that's one of the uh, great impressions I've had in the, in the first instances of actually becoming a, a satellite of, of the moon. Uh, Apollo 8, Houston, uh, what does the old moon look like from 60 miles, over? Okay, uh, Houston, the moon is essentially gray, no color, looks like plaster of Paris, okay, or uh, sort of a grayish beach sand. We can see quite a bit of detail. The moon is a uh, different thing to each one of us. I know my own impression is that it's a, a vast, lonely, forbidding type existence. Jim was uh, busy photographing along the flight path through the navigation system, and I was shooting right, left, and uh, we got a lot of good pictures of uh, the uh, lunar surface. And uh, I think Frank yelled out, look, or something. And uh, here was this gorgeous thing coming up over the, uh, the lunar horizon, the backside of the moon. NASA picked the one I took as the uh, iconic Earthrise picture, but frankly, even though they both claimed they took it, uh, they know who did, but I consider it kind of a crew picture. Actually, I think that was made probably the most important evidence that we brought back was the, was the photography, and Jim and uh, Bill did it all. We were told that on Christmas Eve we would have the largest audience that had ever listened to a human voice, and the only instructions that we got from NASA was to do something appropriate. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. The first ten verses of Genesis is the foundation of many of the world's religions, not just the Christian religion. And there are more people in other religions than the Christian religion around the world. And so this would be appropriate to that, and so that's how it came to pass. Give us, O God, the vision which can see thy love in the world in spite of human failure. Give us the faith to trust the goodness in spite of our ignorance and weakness. Give us the knowledge that we may continue to pray with understanding hearts and show us what each one of us can do to set forward the coming of the day of universal peace. I think that, that the three of us were very, very fortunate Americans. I can remember as I, we stepped out on the carrier with that fresh ocean breeze and the flag flying there and the sailors all standing around. It was a feeling to me of overwhelming sense of gratitude for what we did been part of. I didn't realize exactly what we had accomplished. I knew that we accomplished a successful first flight to the moon, but I didn't know the significance of it uh, for the United States and for the world of what, what had happened. It, it takes time for these things to sink in. And in a sense, uh, had great feelings about the accomplishment, but I frankly felt a little guilty because all of us had uh, comrades and colleagues doing uh, things that I thought were a lot more dangerous. And uh, we were lucky to be part of it, as Frank said. And we sort of got all the adulation and all the success and all the plaudits. And there were so many people that were trying to serve this country under much more difficult circumstances. So I felt very humble and very grateful. And from the crew of Apollo 8, we close with good night, good luck, a Merry Christmas, and God bless all of you, all of you on the good earth.